My name is Marco Carbone. I work as a research fellow at the, in the Division of Gastroenterology and Hepatology at the University of Cambridge. And this is David Jones, Professor of Liver Immunology at Newcastle University. And we are speaking on behalf of the UK PBC Consortium. We've been asked by the editor of Gastroenterology to discuss our paper entitled Sex and Age are Determinants of Clinical Phenotype of Primary Biliary Cirrhosis and Response to Ursodeoxycholic Acid. This paper describes the clinical phenotype of primary biliary cirrhosis in a large court including more than 2,000 patients with PBC recruited throughout the United Kingdom. I will briefly explain the background, the methodology, and the aims of the study. And Professor Jones will summarize the major findings of the study. In these studies, we wanted to address two major issues. First of all, previous studies have described a small series of patients with PBC, and they've been performed in centers where with a particular interest in those phenotypes. These studies were therefore prone to selection bias. Secondly, it is well recognized that ulcer response represents a major predictor of long-term prognosis. But we don't really know what predicts ulcer response. And this is very important in order to early identify patients with a high risk of poor prognosis. We therefore performed an observational study using the UK PBC court in order to characterize the clinical phenotype in primary biliary cirrhosis and to identify clinical variables that predict ulcer response. The UK PBC court is a national court of patients recruited throughout the United Kingdom to support large-scale studies of PBC, including high throughput genetic studies. This court includes 2,400 patients with PBC for whom data on use of URSO, response to URSO, liver transplant status, symptoms, and quality of life were available. In addition, we have also analyzed a subgroup of 1,300 patients with PBC for whom extensive baseline data, including liver function tests, platelet counts, ultrasound scan, were available. Major symptoms in PBC, such as fatigue and pruritus, were measured using the PBC40, which is a validated PBC-specific quality of life measure. Proratus was also assessed using the visual analog scale. Daytime sonorance was measured using the Epworth sleepiness scale. Autonomic dysfunction was assessed using the orthostatic grading scale. And finally, the anxiety and depression were assessed using the hospital anxiety and depression scale. I will now ask you, Professor Jones, to explain the major finding of the study. Thank you, Marco. The demographics of the study population reflected those that are well described in PBC. The mean age of presentation of the patients was 55, 90% um, were female, uh, and 80% of the patients who'd been treated with ursodeoxycholic acid for a minimum of a year responded to therapy. We feel that the study has four important conclusions and one important implication. The first conclusion is that the urso deoxycholic acid response criteria have been externally validated in this study in a large and independent population. I think placing beyond any doubt the value of these criteria in terms of predicting risk uh, to PBC patients over the long term. All of the criteria that have been published were validated in this study and we feel the time has now come we should, where we should apply these criteria into routine clinical practice. In our study, the Paris 1 criteria described by Corpuchot had the greatest predictive value and they're the criteria that were applied throughout the rest of the study. Our second conclusion relates to the impact of age at presentation on response to URSO. And this is the first study in PBC that has been adequately powered to explore this aspect. What we found is that younger age at presentation was significantly associated with reduced likelihood of response to therapy. 
Over 90% of patients presenting over the age of 80 responded to therapy, but this fell to 50% in patients presenting below the age of 50, a group of people who will obviously need more years of liver health. And this represents an important area of unmet clinical need. The third conclusion relates to gender, and again this study is the first that's been adequately powered to look at the impact of gender on response and phenotype in PBC, particularly relating to male patients. What we found is that male patients were diagnosed later in the disease course with PBC as in an older age. Once diagnosed, they were as likely as female patients to receive urso therapy, but they were significantly less likely to respond to that therapy. Importantly, in multivariate analysis, splenomegaly, which is a marker of progression of liver disease and male gender, were independently associated with reduced response to urso, indicating that it isn't just that men had more advanced disease at presentation. So male patients overall in, are a higher risk group of patients. Phenotypically, there were also differences. Male patients were less likely to be fatigued and less likely to have pruritus in PBC than matched female patients. And in terms of the fatigue, interestingly, male patients had a lower level of autonomic symptoms than female patients, and their lower level of dysautonomia was in correlation with their lower level of fatigue severity, further linking autonomic symptoms with fatigue. The fourth conclusion relates to symptoms and urso response. What we found is that symptoms were only loosely associated with urso response. There was an association between pruritus severity and non-response to urso linked through the alkaline phosphatase criteria, which is perhaps understandable. Fatigue was not associated with urso response. It was, however, associated with length of time since the diagnosis of PBC, suggesting that chronicity of disease is an important factor in terms of fatigue in patients. In terms of the implications of this study, we feel it has validated urso response criteria and we feel that these should now move to routine clinical practice. And we also feel that importantly, this identification of younger patients as being a particularly high risk group identifies a group of people where we need to focus in terms of research and particularly focus in terms of novel therapeutics if we're to improve outcomes overall in this important disease.